Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Chef Joshua Lewis. We're going to pick up on our watermelon lesson from last night. Um, show you how to break them down. Also, it can be done with every type of melon, honeydew, Crenshaw, cantaloupe. Um, also, this recipe that we're gonna be making can also be done with those types of melons as well. So we're gonna be making a watermelon, goat cheese, and basil salad. Great for the summertime, very fresh, very different. Uh, something people won't necessarily expect. Uh, no, I did not create this, by the way. Many restaurants do it. Um, but it's a nice creative way to use melons. So people always assume that it has to be done sweet or desserty. It doesn't have to be. Alright, so we have our watermelon. We're gonna cut some even slices. Should be enough for what we need. Keep them stacked up nice and neat so you can create even cuts. this to our mixing bowl. That should be enough. This will be for snacking. Mmm. Yum. Alright. Now we're going to add some basil to it. Basil is amazing, like most fresh herbs. And a lot of people take them for granted or don't quite understand them. But these are very full of antioxidants very full of what's called flavonoids, which are like phytonutrients. They're like super cancer-fighting, anti-aging-fighting wonders that are held inside the leaves. Um, they protect us on a cellular, cellular level. They actually regrow cells, um, protect DNA and chromosomes, and yeah, fight free radicals that want to destroy our cells. So eat more herbs, fresh herbs. Um, also high in manganese and some types of minerals that a lot of people don't know about, which are very essential for a healthy immune system as well, and bone growth and such and such. Moving on. We're going to take our basil, you can either tear it, make it nice and rustic if you want, or if you want to be fancy and be Italian, stack the leaves on top of each other. We're going to need some more. Also this is gifted for me by my good chef friend Donna Abramson who owned a wonderful restaurant called Bright Food Shop in Chelsea, in New York City for 17 years. Um, you gotta learn that not all food is bad. Even though it looks like this, it's not necessarily bad. It's a little bruising and oxidation, but it's still healthy, it still has nutrients, and it's still edible. All you should do is just flash it in nice ice-cold water, and a lot of times these greens, even lettuces, will come back to life, and you can use them again. Americans and the world, we waste too much food, and it's a problem these days and it's something that needs to be resolved. Thankfully, we do have some good chefs these days that are doing that, such as Dan Barber and Klaus Meyer, people who are re-evolutionizing the way we look at food and handle food. These are also the flowers, the little petal parts, which are also edible, so you can add those right into your salad. Don't be afraid to eat them. And softer herbs that have stems like this, like basil, can also be chopped really fine, like chives, and just added on as a garnish as well, or thrown in the stock and some type of herb broth if you want to add flavor to things. So don't always throw things away. Save food, it died for you, respect it. I'm gonna go into the whole animal thing yet. Back to the basil. All right, I'm gonna have a couple more leaves. So stack these up, and then we're gonna roll them nice and neat. And then we're gonna do what we call chiffonade, which is a very fine slicing. Now, Bill's gonna get some good close-ups here in my knife so you understand how to hold things and move your hand when chopping and slicing. I call it the spider effect. These little fingers guide everything and become a barrier for your knife and a guide for your knife. And they crawl. They crawl. This controls your sizing. The thumb stays tucked in back, which is then a feeder. It feeds the food through. And also, your thumb's not like this. You're not gonna fucking hack it off. Sorry for the language again. Anyways. Back to this. So I'm gonna hold my knife, and we're gonna do motions like this. See how it glides, it glides. Okay, not like this or like that. Gliding. We're touching, and we're gliding. All right, so now, ready? For shift knot, you need to be very, very fine. It needs to become
like little bread, grass or hay. It's still a little wet because I had it in the water. I should dry it a little bit more first, but this will be fine. Okay. See how my fingers are going? Guiding the knife. It's guiding the knife. So let me just get nice and little wet and dry it off a little. Little like confetti strings. Little confetti strings. Alright, into the basil. I mean into the watermelon. Oops. Add these flowers in because we know we can eat them. Tear up this basil, add it in. And now, who here has a grandma or an aunt? I would always add salt to their melon. Ah, oh, yes, we all have. And everyone's like, why do you do that? That's so gross. As a reason. And it actually isn't gross once you start realizing it. Salt activates and brings out natural flavors in most foods, especially sugary ones and fruits. So it actually enhances the sweetness of the fruit that's already inside. It's bringing out all the good stuff inside, like what humans need to do. All this prejudice and people wanting to hate another people, no. Everything's great inside, so add a little salt to it, it's all going to come out. So we're going to add salt to our watermelon. Not a lot, just a little. For this type of salad, I also like to add fresh, crack, fresh cracked black pepper. Or you can use pink peppercorns or green too. They are a little fruity and add little notes of spice to fruity dishes. So don't be afraid of them. Embrace them. Let's mix this up a little. And then for dressing, you can just do olive oil if you want. Um, with a nice sweet vinegar, like white balsamic or something like that. I tend to like to use a nice reduced balsamic vinegar. Um, it's already sweet from however long they've aged it for. This one is, I think, 10 months aged. So it creates almost like a syrup consistency. So a little goes a long way. And this will also help bring out some of the sweetness. And it's also going to help to cut through our rich goat cheese or feta if you have it. That I think we better, but goat cheese also works. This is just a fresh goat cheese from our local store. Just break it up into small pieces and add it in. Don't put too much in because we're going to add a little more on top so it makes it look pretty and stays all white. Because the balsamic is going to turn it a little brown color. So we're going to mix this all up gently because you don't want to break the watermelon and ruin that lovely knife work that you worked so hard on. Taste some. Mm. It's so different than you expect. Milk? Did you try some? No? Yeah. Ooh, yum! Okay, he doesn't want any. Alright, now let's go to the plate. Grab our bowl. Carefully spoon everything in. I don't want to make a mess. So not only is this refreshing during the summertime, it's very, very nutritious for you between flavonoids and phytonutrients and the watermelon and basil to the lovely anti-inflammatory, anti-aging benefits of goat cheese and goat products, uh, which are finally becoming a trend in the world and especially America. Okay, I'm gonna add a few more pieces of basil, a couple little baby leaves are always pretty, Maybe a little more flowers. And then I always like to top with just a little bit more of the goat cheese to get that really bright white contrast. All right, and here's the next simple way you're going to wow your guests. There you have it. Maybe a little more black pepper. Why not? Get on top of that goat cheese. Ah, beautiful. So you have it from my kitchen to yours. I hope you enjoy. Join me again for another nutritious meal. Quick and easy. Watermelon, goat cheese, basil salad. Follow me on YouTube and Facebook. Special thanks to Bill for my cameraman. And for my brothers, Matt, Russ, and Mitch Lewis, who have supported me and helped me all these days. And we're going to keep on moving. What a petite.